Ladies, do you struggle to get so present during your most intimate moments with your spouse? Then listen to this episode because I'll be sharing five tips to help you get present during sex. Welcome to the Feel Amazing Naked podcast. I'm Amanda Walker, and I'm here every week bringing you content to get your mind, body, and soul on a path towards feeling amazing naked. So ladies, time to take it off. Welcome to February 2020. I hope that you are continuing on with your journey from January and focusing in on daily action to help get what you want. I'm going to create the space these first two weeks of February to totally hop on the cliche of Valentine's Day. I felt like it was perfect timing to talk about one of my favorite topics, sex. Before we dive in, though, I want to share something exciting happening in the Feel Amazing Naked world. Feel Amazing Naked is a concept that I believe is much deeper than just weight loss, although that is something I'm passionate about helping a woman create for herself in a sustainable way. What I've seen, though, over the years now and working with women who approach change in a sustainable way is that when we began to do the inside work of building confidence and we create systems in our life that allow healthy living to just become a part of our identity, it parts the clouds and it opens up our mind and our life to the potential of more. All of a sudden, we're not taking up so much energy or negative self-talk, talking about these changes we wish to happen because we've established practices that now it's just like a sense of like, this is who I am. And this leads to the desire to pursue bigger dreams. So something I don't talk much about that I will start talking more about is I am working with many women right now who are in pursuit of bigger dreams. They're like, Amanda, I've had this fire my entire life to, you know, leave my job and start this business. Or Amanda, I've had this dream to cultivate this project that I've never done before. And I want your leadership and your support. I am so excited for these women because they are like totally pursuing their big, scary dreams and doing it in a way with such confidence and sustainability. So from that has been birthed the Feel Amazing Naked Inner Circle, which is a small group of service-based, passion-driven women who are come together in pursuit of their bigger hopes and dreams. And this program is launching It's a community of like-minded women that are high achieving, highly ambitious, and are ready to step out into discomfort because they have the confidence to do so to pursue their bigger passions. So it's a blend of keeping health, the core values that sustain a bigger dream and vision of building a business. And I am so excited to connect with these women. So I am sharing it here because it just might speak to you. And if it does, feel free to email support at feelamazingnaked.com and ask some great questions. But this is a community who will meet regularly with live events to come together and truly help each other step into their bigger purpose in the world. And I am excited to lead these ladies. It's February, and I'm trying not to be too cliche and talk about love and marriage. So I'm just going to go right for the juicy stuff and talk about sex, not just on this episode, but next week's too. So I am giving you a little bit of warning before we dive into the content. If you have little ears around, probably a good time to throw in some AirPods or headphones as we dive into this week's topic. Why do I enjoy talking about sex? Because I believe it is a really key component of marriage, but also of how our inner confidence reflects our ability to connect with our significant other. And when I talk about sex, you guys have great questions and you're like, create more of this content. Thank you for talking about things that nobody else is talking about and for your vulnerability of sharing what's happening in your own relationship. So my husband is going to probably crap his pants a little bit when when he hears this episode, but 
I am here for vulnerability and honesty to help you improve your marriage and your confidence too. I have read blogs, blog posts, other content through social media where they really talk about, you know, to increase connection during intimacy, cuddle more, have more foreplay and all that kind of jazz. But what we aren't talking about is kind of the pink elephant in the room about all those things are great. But I hear from women and in my own personal experience is that we can be really physically present for intimacy with your partner, but emotionally and mentally, you can be in a freaking entirely different world. And I don't know about you, but for me, that's not something I desire. When we have the opportunity to connect, which is harder and harder to do, I feel like as our lives grow busier, we have older children, we have varying schedules, we are focusing our efforts and energies in multiple places. And if we don't make that a priority, it's absolutely more challenging to just connect, let alone be present when you have time to have an intimate moment between the two of you. So today, my goal is to help you become more connected during sex. I want you to be so in the moment and feel all the feels and welcome a deeper level of enjoyment and presence that brings you two together. And I want to be honest and tell you that this message is for me too, because this is something that I want to make sure continually happens in my marriage. And there's definitely been moments where it hasn't, and it was noticeable and palpable for both my husband and I. So I'm going to give you the backstory about why this became something I personally began to work on years ago, one evening, where my hubby and I had a moment to be hot and heavy in it, and he was excited and ready, and I totally was ready to enjoy it too. Things start to get, you know, moving, and he, you know, is making his moves, and I'm like, yeah, on the outside. but. The problem was that on the inside, the part that he was sensing actually was that my brain was thinking about all the things that I had to do. It was like this Rolodex of thoughts of every single work thing that I had coming the next day, the kids' schedules and what was happening the next day. And did I have the stuff for their lunches? And did they do their homework, the laundry, the cooking, every single thing that was on my list of to-do items was just a Rolodex of intrusive thoughts. And it was like my brain was just running away with those stories. And it was almost for a moment that my physical self was there, but my emotional self was completely absent. Like my inside had gone out, escaped, and went somewhere else, and we were just going through the motions. He looked at me and he said, hey, you don't want this, huh? You're like not here with me right now. And it was like that moment I came back to and I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening right now. We're in this super special moment together. And I so desperately craved being present, but I realized that there are times where I was treating it like a to-do list item, like, oop, checkbox. And, you know, we have historically a really deep connection in intimacy And as our lives rev up, I realized that I was struggling to get present for these moments, but I desperately wanted to be present. And so in lies, the struggle I believe you have too is we want to be there. We want to want it. We want to be there to have that deep sense of connection and wholeness together. But sometimes we're unable in our brains to slow it down and get present. So my mission today is to really share with you a few tips that I think will help you begin to really feel in the moment and feel the feels with your partner. And from this, at least you're going to cultivate a greater sense of awareness and be able to identify what's stopping you personally from having that deeper sense of connection. So here are my five tips to help you get connected with your partner during sex. Okay. First and foremost is you have got to get connected to your own body. I feel that this is honestly probably number one for me. I'm going to share just another brief story. 
But when you begin to have confidence about your physical self, you begin to practice loving your body and showing up for you on a day-to-day basis, you start to feel more comfortable with your body. And that bleeds into sex. Years ago, before I kind of went on my own personal weight loss journey that then led into like, well, not only like, great, I lost weight, but if I don't believe I'm happy on the inside, then how am I going to feel connected and love my body on the outside? There was moments at the beginning of that journey where I absolutely refused to take my shirt off in front of my husband. And I was so uncomfortable with myself that really that was reflected in our intimacy. I didn't want him to see. I didn't want him to touch. It was like, let's just do this thing, get what you need, and we'll move on. And that isn't good for anyone, right? That isn't good for him because he sees you for you. He sees you for just wanting to be so connected. And we, as women, get to experience uh, a deeper level of connection to ourselves if we really choose to go on that journey. And so for me, it's about showing up for myself day in and day out. It's not about a perfect size two. It's about, am I doing the things on a weekly basis that fuel my body for success, that make me feel strong and sexy, right? Body movement. Am I doing the mental preparation every week to love myself? Because I believe two things. You don't have to love where you're at, but you can love the journey to get there, which helps you show up connected and loving your body. And then when you arrive at that moment, it takes daily practice to continue to understand and maintain that place of both outside and inside confidence. And so if you aren't comfortable with your own body and you feel stress surrounding it, that stress moves into your intimate relationship with your significant other too. So I think step one is like work on yourself, get connected to your own body, and you're going to see it bleed into many areas of your own life. All right. Tip number two is you have to talk with your partner about it. Let him know that you're like in this mental space that you have emotions that are stopping you from being present. If you're angry or sad or unhappy and then you go into this intimate moment, you're not going to show up in a way that will bring you together. So you end up being angry with him. You'll be resentful because you're going to blame him. Like, well, why didn't you know I wasn't able? Like, didn't you see that I was mad? But I always remind myself, honestly, and my clients too, that your husband cannot read your mind. It's your job to tell him what is on your mind. And so if there's a moment where things feel like they could head in an intimate direction, but you're not emotionally there, communicate about it first, which truly leads me to tip number three. If you are not connected outside the bedroom, you cannot expect to be connected inside the bedroom. Sex in marriage is not meant to be a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of experience. But an important aspect, if you're feeling like there's this uh, like almost barrier between the two of you when intimacy comes available to you, then really evaluate, are you being intimate emotionally with each other outside the bedroom? Are you sharing your daily struggles? Are you sharing your daily wins? Are you letting life go by so fast that you're no longer creating the space for you to come together? Then before you focus on the bedroom, I believe the place you need to focus on is outside of the bedroom. I think that could be so simple as, you know, when the kids go to bed, if you have children, your priority is 10 minutes of coming together, no TV on, no phones, and just really debriefing your day. It could be when you're both home from work or he comes home or you come home. It's pulling away five minutes into the closet just to connect and look at each other and talk about your day. It's picking up the phone even during a busy work day and emotionally connected, asking each other, what do you need? How are you? It's very easy for life to become busy and busy to become an excuse for disconnect. Quite frankly, I think this is why divorce is at an all-time high is that we don't want to do the hard work. It's so much easier to just let this hamster wheel of life continue to spin and spin and spin and just like weight loss, just like money, just like anything. If it is a priority to you, you will create the time and space. And so it's an honest reflection of am I making my marriage or my relationship a priority? If you answer yes, then I believe number three is probably null and void for you. 
If you're going, oh, shit, this is where I'm struggling, then it's time for you to start here. Start with five to 10 minutes of a routine that is something so simple for you to come together with your spouse and discuss. My husband and I will verbalize to each other, I feel really disconnected from you right now. Do you feel it too? And he's answering yes or I'm answering yes. It's like, okay, it doesn't have to be a fancy date or date night. Like I'll see a lot of women tell me, oh, well, I'm, I, we go on a date every week or we go on a date night once a month. I think those things are spectacular. But if you're not showing up in a connected way to those dates and you're just going through the motions there, then those date nights mean jack crap. They don't have to be simple and fancy like that. To me, creating the space at home for connected date, I'm air quoting that, is the most important part. That's the daily action step that is necessary to make sure you two are on the same page, that you're feeling what they're feeling in their life and you are showing up for them on a consistent basis. Simple, simple things have a means of spreading like wildfire into your marriage when you're both consistently showing up for one another. Tip number four to help you feel more connected with your spouse during sex is the word surrender. Women, we like to be in control and that directly impedes our ability to be connected and enjoy an experience. So what would it look like if you just sat back, relaxed, close your eyes, really just feel the moment and let go of controlling a situation? And I'm not talking about weird stuff here. I'm just talking about most simple getting so like in a place where you can let go of being the one determining what happens, keeping it on your timeline. The word surrender to me in this situation is like, for me, it feels like peace. It's just saying, I am aware of this like energetic flow that comes between the two of us. And the more we try to control things like that, and this is also in food, the more we try to control food, the more we try to control money, the more out of control we actually feel. So if you just step back and surrender a little bit, don't worry about the timeline, then I think that you're going to find you feel much more connected, which leads me into my fifth and final tip is I want you to get present. So this is the hardest one, I think, in my opinion. So I'm going to liken it to meditation because here's where I feel that I can give you a really tangible action step. Oftentimes I hear from people when we're talking about meditation, oh, well, I can't meditate because my brain won't shut down. And so it's meditation is not for me. What they don't understand is the act of like dismissing the Rolodex of thoughts and those intrusive thoughts coming in is meditating, friends. Everybody who meditates, the purpose of it is to dismiss those thoughts. And the more you're able to push those thoughts away, the more we shut down the critical thinking part of our brain and the more we get present, not just during meditation, but in our whole day, because we're showing our brain that it's actually safe to like let that subconscious stuff come up. So while meditating, we will feel the Rolodex of to-do lists and thoughts that come in. And for me, the most effective way in the beginning of dismissing those thoughts was I was imagining my hand actually taking those thoughts and push them away. And what you're telling the brain is, okay, push those away and get present. Don't let my brain run away with that story. It will, I promise, at some point, all of a sudden you're going to realize you're two weeks deep in your to-do list. And then all of a sudden you're going to go, oh, ah, I see that. I ran away with that thought and that story. And your ability to call yourself back to the present moment is meditation. And the more you show up and practice that every day, the less you run away with those thoughts and the more present you get. So for me, the powerful shift I had is when I want to be intimate and present with my husband and those thoughts want to intrude. I'm literally treating it just like meditation. It's like, oh, I see you thought, like, go away for now. I want to be present. So I feel like surrendering and letting go and just working on those thoughts and stories of not letting myself run away, looking at him, even closing my eyes just helps me get so 
present that I can enjoy it because then I don't feel the stress of like, what's to come? Oh my gosh. Because you know, when you feel stressed, your body feels it too. You're tense, you're tight. You like don't want to relax into the moment. And of course, if you're not relaxed, you can't enjoy it. And then all of a sudden minutes go by and you weren't even there. You didn't enjoy it emotionally, physically, and you're not connected, which is one of the most deepest, you know, intimacy is one of the deepest levels of bringing a marriage together. So I am not a subject matter expert in sex, but I actually think that's why I should talk about it. Because I'm not an expert, these are the true struggles I've had and continue. I will have them too. And so I think that it's valuable for me to share just the simple strategies that have had a really profound impact, not just for me, but for my clients. I have clients tell me like, I've never had sex with my husband with my shirt off. And now I am like, thank you. I've had clients tell me, I actually am coming back to enjoying intimate moments with my husband now because I feel so good in my body. And so this is a prime example where when we do work on ourselves. It brings so much more confidence and huge wins into our life that trickle into how connected we are in our marriage, which is ultimately, I think, something that everybody is craving. I should say all women are craving, but sometimes we just don't have the strategies to make it happen. So I hope that one or all of these five tips deeply resonates with you. And my suggestion for you is go take action. Pick one that really spoke to you and say, you know what? I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on surrendering. I'm going to work on getting present, getting connected outside the bedroom, talking more about what's holding me back from getting present, or lastly, getting connected to my own body. So ladies, I hope this message invites you during this most cliche time ever, but I'm owning it to go get connected with your partner during your most intimate moments. This week's fan tip is about inspiration and ideas. If you don't follow my Pinterest page, you should. Go to regular Pinterest, search A Walk My Way. You are going to see a plethora, I like the word plethora, of boards that I am curating for you. You will see all sorts of emotional boards, self-care boards, recipe boards. You will see that all of my boards help to create a holistic, better version of you. And each week, each month, we are growing our following on Pinterest. You will see kind of what pins have been taking off. So I encourage you to go visit pinterest.com forward slash a walk my way for inspiration in all things health, wellness, and life. The Feel Amazing Naked podcast is growing, literally doubling downloads every single month, and it's humbling, but really it's all because of you. So I just want to say thank you for listening and continuing to listen. Help us grow by sharing the Feel Amazing Naked podcast on your social media platform. If you're listening to an episode, take a screenshot, share it in your story, on your social, tag me. Leave a review if you feel so inclined, but please allow me to help more women by sharing the awesome content that I create. So thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me.